Okay, guys, Verdier here. Um, <coughs> please excuse me, I still got a terrible cold trying to deal with it. But I'm bringing in my four today to hopefully get the um, <coughs> recall update done, which is just a little cover for the um, for an opening where someone might be able to electrocute themselves in the trunk. My only concern is because I've got that new hideaway amp in there, I don't know whether it's going to be a problem for them to do it or not. Um, I don't know how they do this. Um, I don't know what their ideals are behind it. Um, so we're going to check. They're also supposedly going to take that awful sticker off. I hope they do that because I hate that. But as you can see underneath, we've got the amp in there. And I don't know if they're going to have a problem with taking that out or not. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Uh, later on, I'm going to be going out and getting the amp uh, reset because it seems to stay on in standby mode for a while there. So I'll let you know how the update goes, show you Big Blue without the sticker on it, and upload this video for the 10 people to watch. Take care, guys. Well, guys, everything is done. The recall is done. I don't know what time it is. You can't even tell. I think it took about an hour and a half to two hours. <coughs> they also took the sticker off, which is nice. I like it better without the sticker on there. Uh, I kind of thought the sticker was ugly to begin with. They put everything back in there, and they put my subwoofer in there. A uh, little cockeyed, but I don't care. It's still back in there. Um, and, of course, now I'm off to the guy who installed my amplifier to make sure he gets it set up right because the darn thing is staying on. I know it's staying into standby mode even when I'm gone. Uh, hasn't really hurt the car, but that's really not the way we want it. So, recall is complete. Uh, everything's in good shape. I'm off for a nice long drive, which I'm not looking forward to. And I will let you know what happens with the uh, with the amp uh, and the sub uh, to make sure uh, that's updated and let you know we're trying to get more volume out of it and <clears throat> also make sure it turns off when I turn off the car, which it ain't doing. All right, take care. Verdier Hello, out. guys, this is Verdier again. I probably look awful and glassy-eyed. <clears throat> I've been sick for the past week um, as an addendum to this video, which I don't know, 20 people watch if lucky. Um, I want to let you understand what's going on with the subwoofer. Uh, the subwoofer does put out plenty of bass. Uh, it just needed to be set a little higher. Um, the installer was being a little more careful because he knows I play volumes at very high, play the radio at very high volumes. So, um, for most people, it's going to be very fine, and it, it, the hideaway gives off a lot of sound. Uh, the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the, um, control that I have, it seems to be different than the newer controls. Um, he was doing, a, an install was done on another vehicle, and he said the newer control seems to have more response on the volume. Um, my control only maybe makes a six decibel difference, uh, if you're buying a new hideaway, um, I think it's worth trying to put the control in. Unfortunately, the new one's a little bit on the big side, so hopefully you have a good spot to put it in because it does make a big difference in uh, volume change. If you have an older one with an older switch like the one I have, which is a nicer switch in my opinion, um, touch and go. If you got a nice spot to put it and it doesn't bother, by all means, to use it. Now, concerning this thing about it staying on all the time, we found out something very interesting about the Ford and the way it responds to things. Um, turns out it wasn't staying on, but it was. When you turn off the car, everything turns off. Once the car is completely turned off, there's still six volts being sent out. And that continues to send out uh, to the radio systems and, and a lot of these systems for a good uh, five minutes. Once that is, is, uh, is done then it totally turns everything off. Now, the reason I was thinking it was staying on anyway is because I would keep opening up the trunk and looking in, and it would be the light would be red, and then it would turn green. That's because just opening up the trunk essentially wakes up the entire car. Uh, I mean, even if you're not even unlocked, you just unlock, open the trunk, that basically wakes the whole car up, and it puts the system on a 6-volt standby. Uh, very interesting setup for, for and you'd only know this if you know your car a little bit better. So don't be worried about it staying on. Um, as you'll see in the video, and I'm going to play it right now, uh, we decided to hook it up just a little bit different um, 
when we weren't sure whether it was turning off, he decided to go directly into the stereo itself uh, for a hot turn on and turn off. Oh, those are my Thin Mints. I, I, I take those in my car just in case uh, diabetic issues, you know. I don't suffer from too many diabetic issues. Usually I eat plenty, so it's not a concern. But um, he wanted to have it turn on and turn off, and it was still doing it with with this. I mean, he would sit in the car with the doors closed, and it would sit there and stay on. And we finally got out, and we're sitting and standing there talking. What are we going to do? we got to figure out what to do because all the, uh, the um, uh, cigarette lighter plugs also power all the time. In fact, I think they power all the time anyway. Uh, at least they, they can if anything's plugged into them or, or, or draining off of them. Um, then we heard a beep and the amp turned off. And it turns out that the amp turns off after about five minutes anyway. We believe um, after doing some measurements, it's actually the car shuts itself off at that point. Uh, so it takes the car about a good five minutes even after everything is turned off for it to stop sending that six volt signal to the, uh, to the amp. So don't worry about it. Uh, my final recommendation on the hideaway uh, sub, I think it's perfect for this kind of car. Gives off plenty of bass. You're not going to be breaking people's uh, uh, heart rhythms with this uh, sub, but it puts out a lot of sound. You got to do some shopping. It is a bit on the expensive side, but there is a reason for it. It's because it's very good. Um, easiest way on this car to hook it up. <coughs> Excuse me. Easiest way on this car to hook it up is to slave it off the rear speakers. The two rear speakers are the subwoofers of the car. They're six by nines, go figure. Hook them into it because basically this amp is made to run off the speaker wires off, off and on anyway. It's, it's made to be hardwired, uh, mostly because it works on the assumption that your car doesn't, isn't really set up for RCA inputs or anything like that. It's meant to be very easy. It's easy to hide. It's small, and it gives off a lot of thump. <clears throat> and it's very configurable, and uh, Kicker just puts out some really nice stuff. So, big thumbs up for this. Uh, it's made a significant difference in the sound. Uh, not just the bass, but the bass quality uh, is much better. Uh, it's much smoother. Uh, and also, you know, another thing, uh, a lot of my music isn't normalized. I normalized my music once before, and it really sounded like crap when I did that. So, I have to change my volumes quite a bit. And there's a lot of my music that sometimes just doesn't have proper bass response because it wasn't recorded at a very high uh, level. It was recorded at low uh, kilohertz level, so the bass is missing. So I might have been over-concerned about that. All right, well, the next video will probably be me discussing the partial install, because this is going to take a little while, uh, of hooking up the, um, uh, the um, whew, Honda Insight. And getting that thing up and running uh, with the new um, with the new stereo. I'm going to do the speakers first. Um, I don't think that's going to fix the problem, but I would have to change the speakers anyway because the speakers are not all that great. They're not horrible, but for high volumes, they need better speakers, and the kickers are going to do it. I'll probably end up having to put an amp in there. I can't get people to respond to me on amp questions. So, you know, people tell me get this amp, that amp, and I say, "What did you do to make it?" And, and nobody responds. So I I don't know. Uh, we'll just have to play it by ear and we'll figure it out and hopefully I'll be the response that people can hear of what troubles happened, what was going on. Again, I can't promise you any real video. Um, you know, I'll be working at the time so I won't even be able to get to where, wherever, uh, where it's being worked on. Uh, so, um, yeah, I might be able to get a few shots here and there just to show you what it looks like taking apart and all that. Mostly it's going to be a discussion about the sound quality and so forth. So I do apologize for the boringness of, of the video. All right. Take care, Verdier out, and uh, <clears throat> I wish me luck at getting over this stupid thing. I've been having this cold for a week now, and it's awful. Take care, guys.